Hello and welcome to this special episode of the Widener World of Sports podcast. This is episode number four in part one of a two-part series. My name is Greg Spicka, the Director of Athletic Communications here at Widener University. Today we're joined by members of the swimming team and a Widener professor. Sitting on my right, sophomore Pat Rankin. Directly across from me, junior Sally Myers. To her right, head coach Mark Yankovich. And sitting on my left, Dr. David Coughlin, a biology professor. On this two-part episode, we'll dive into Widener Athletics Professor Athletic Team Relationship and Mentorship Program. So, Dave, as our special guest on this episode, I hear you do some laps in our pool from time to time. How did you get involved with swimming? Well, I, I started out as a runner, and as I've aged, I've found I need other ways to get a workout, so I started showing up at the pool more often, and over the last year, started seeing Mark more and more at the pool, and getting in and getting regular laps going, and that's how I kind of got connected to the swim team. Yeah. So did someone from our department come talk to you about trying to be a professor with swimming? Well, Mark reached out to me when the program was being developed to become an advisor or partner with the swim team. Um, as a professor here, I'm, I'm enthusiastic about academic advising, maybe more so than some of my colleagues. I enjoy trying to connect with students and try and help them get through all of the issues of school, whether it's classes and internships and things, and I thought, saw this as a natural extension of the opportunity to work with students um, and help them you know, excel at, at swimming just like they do at school and, and everything else they endeavor. Yeah. Mark, how does having a professor directly associated with swimming benefit you as a coaching staff? Well, number one, um, when, when I found him at the pool swimming, we knew his uh, talent was really strong in the water, so we uh, tried to uh, get him on the team, but he said he wasn't willing to do that. So. <laughs> We thought we could get him in a different area, which um, we um, have strived for. You know, we always talk to our recruits about academics, you know, doing well and balancing some of our harder majors at school. And um, I know it can be a challenge for our swimmers to, you know, maybe come and share, hey, I'm not doing well in this class or I need help. And um, we really wanted to have him join our staff to give the kids someone to reach out to. So. That's why we found him, and I knew he loved swimming because he was there every day. So. so does that take a lot of pressure off of you and your shoulders? This is the first year I've done it, and yes, it um, definitely was something that um, has helped, and it's something where you know, I may not be comfortable telling them, hey, like, here's how you do um, you know, this nursing procedure or you know, business or whatever, you know, they need help in, but um, he's the expert behind, you know, talking to these people and how to get the studying and do the time management with it. So um, it, it has taken a lot off my plate. So yeah, great. And I know Sally, there's a familiar face in the room. How does having someone like Dr. Coughlin help you with your athletics, academic? Um, it's definitely helpful because it's someone, especially as a bio major, and he's a bio professor. It really helps have someone who knows what my curriculum is going through, such as when I was having trouble in a class this past, last semester and I went to Mark, Mark just sent me right over to Dr. Coughlin because he knew that he'd be a better um, asset in person to help me with. And I did go to him. He definitely helped try to uh, mitigate like the stress of it and knowing how swimming at least works in the sense of the time management of it. He really definitely helped me figure out how the best way to manage it would be. And Sally was um, our first student to use the program. And um, I guess uh, this is a question for you, but with you using it, right, you had a comfort already knowing um, Dave. Um, was that easier for you to use? And Yeah, definitely, because it's someone who already kind of knows who I am and how I think. So it wasn't like a starting over having to explain how I think as, an a, as a student and how I um, handle my studies. He definitely already knew that as having as a professor. So it, took a load off it, which is very nice, and it's a luxury that I know not everyone gets to have. I mean, the only thing that comes to the top of my head would be your advisor. That's the only thing that I would know of to go to. I mean, obviously there is, like, the tutoring center and things of that nature, but, like, 
I feel like with the the business classes, um, you know, there's so many of them, and usually like students are spread out so so far throughout the classes that there's not like set courses where students usually have issues. So like it's harder to find tutoring with those kind of things. But it is it is comforting knowing that had I had an issue, I can reach out to Dave and maybe he can't necessarily help me with whatever business class that might be, but he can point me in the right direction to help find the assistance I would need. Mm -hmm. Dave, I know that Marcus mentioned that you've sent a couple of emails to the team. You've done practice visits, meet visits. How'd you get involved knowing that you were con you were going to come to that? Uh, I, uh, I'm very happy to get involved with the team. I, I, I think that was something that as soon as I was asked to do it, I was saw this as a natural extension to connect more with students. So I was enthusiastic when he brought it up. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but you know, being able to come to the meets and of course down, be down by the pool and occasionally yell at students to swim faster, <laughs> um, but also just cheer them on and, and try to contribute to the team effort is very enjoyable. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Tad as, as I like to think of him my personal lifeguard. Many times I've come to swim laps and it's just me in the pool and yeah. Pat, yeah. Pat watching after me. I'm always there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like this, it's a great, uh, the team itself really hangs together well. I think they have a great camaraderie. So I <coughs> feel like I'm working my way into that a bit and I look forward to continuing next year to sort of build a relationship. Yeah, so you're definitely planning on Sticking with these guys, we'll have uh, you I back. We'll have you back. Look, it looks <laughs> like I have to come back. Yes. <laughs> the one, the one best thing that I, th I think came out of this was, um, you've been coming to practices and meets, which, I mean, we invited you, but you've been doing it on your own. It hasn't been forced or, you know, hey, I just I'm doing it because I'm the mentor. He's shown an interest the whole time, which. Um, for the swimmers, they don't get a lot of, like a basketball team or a football team, they're not always getting other than their families coming to the meets. And um, to me, this is a huge um, step for, honestly, Widener, you know, the athletics, the academics, and it starts pulling it together. And I, I think what you're gonna see is professors will take more interest in the, maybe the athletics they did or like to watch um, all across campus and make it a priority, which, um, you know, honestly, when he showed up for the first meet, I didn't know he was coming to the first meet, and it was neat. We, we wanted him on the pool deck, coming down there, you know, trying to give you a stopwatch and make him go faster, break some records, but. Plus, I won the 50-50 that day, so. <laughs> <laughs> which he did donate back to the team. Well, I did, but, but I got to win it. Oh, that's way too nice. Too, I would have kept nice. the money. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I turned the money back in, but I got a couple of shirts and a <laughs> swim cap, so. <laughs> we gave him some benefits. Some, some so. swag. <laughs> some, some swag. But that was funny. You won that. <laughs> um, but that, to me, that's been the biggest benefit is seeing you there, and it really is um, – it's neat for future students, and it, you guys will have, a, you know, to me, a, a reference for when you're graduating too. So, um, he also asked for the live stream, and that's when we were swimming at Max. I didn't know that. He did. I know last year, um, even before he was our mentor, he asked me for the link, and he showed it in class when I wasn't there. And I heard about that after. I didn't know that. It was kind of funny. Well, I've had advisees who were swimmers many times, and including some record holders at the. From Widener, and so I always it's one of the few sports which occurs like when championships come it's during the day so we can uh, show it during uh, class in, in the class that Sally had with me last year it's a writing class and there's a lot of in-class work so putting on some races um, can be in the backdrop as long as you looked up at the right time for the right amount of time <laughs> <laughs> yeah you get that minute and a half the quick look and there was Sally racing but we actually had her on As we go forward, I look forward to uh, helping with recruitment, which is something I don't think we, swimming has had a lot of faculty involvement, nor are the other teams. So I think it's a, an expanding role for the faculty advisors of sports teams to contribute to meeting, meeting with recruits who come to meet with Mark, and I can come down there and talk about academics. I've been here long enough that I know some things about a variety of programs, uh, so I hope to be able to help with that 
going forward. And that is something that, um, I mean, every recruit um, we talk to and, um, you know, you guys have both gone through the recruiting process, but um, we always tell them they can do the major and they can do the sport, which um, to me at Weiner, that is a unique thing, especially with some of the more demanding majors. Um, you can't do that at every school. And it's nice to, it will be nice to have a professor share that. Um, and um, they can talk on that with the recruiting. And I guess you guys can speak to this, but um, when you were going through the recruiting process, um, what is it you look for with the academics? Is there something you know, that you wanted explained by a professor maybe rather than the swim coach because you know, the swim coach coaches swimming, not biology, you know? Yeah, I know someone who, I came here for the three plus three PT, and I kind of wish that someone would have told me what it was gonna be like in my senior year when I'm in my first year of grad school and undergrad and swimming and doing with all that. And I mean, I guess I still never really had that. I had talked to other people who were, who were in it, but it definitely would be nice to have that because I'm still sitting here, still kind of like, I've no idea what it's gonna look like. And maybe later on we can definitely have that as more of an option because it's a very popular thing for people to do, especially swimmers. So I know a lot of swimmers who are in here and other schools who are PT track. I don't know. For me, I was I was undecided coming in. Um, so when I was getting recruited, the only thing that I was really shown is I was taking like maybe a couple classes here and there, and I don't think they were anything specific. Maybe like like an elective that somebody had. Um, so you didn't really get to to get a clear picture of what your your academic life would be like um, and speaking with a professor in like any specific department that you're looking at I think is a much more helpful tool instead of just going to some random class and sitting on like a like a philosophy class or something random and currently what we use right now for our recruiting with re you know talking to prospective student athletes is um, we will have them talk to our swimmers so they'll talk to Sally they'll talk to Pat they'll learn what they go through um, but um, they're going through it, so they don't know what the outcome is either once they leave Widener. You know, where are you going to be after? Um, what are you going to be doing your senior year, like Sally brought up? And, um, you know, uh, how, can you but, or how can you balance it with social, you know, clubs they want to do? You know, it, it can be a lot, and I, I think this can give them a better picture of what it's going to be, you know. Where do you all see this program going in years to come? Um, so actually, we're, uh, Dave and I are talking about that a little bit more uh, today. And um, me personally, I want to see it where it's like, like I think to me the biggest part was having a face in the academic field, coming to the pool, enjoying swimming, being at the practices, but um, I, I think the big thing is it gives them an outlet and someone to talk to. Um, I know he's emailed the team without me on it so that he can reach out and they can feel comfortable coming to someone that's in the academic world and not going to their coach all the time with it. And um, what I want to do is I want to see it where individuals reach out to him more often. We only had a few take advantage of that this year, but it was our first year. And I think um, when they see, hey, man, this really helped and – you know, we got some uh, good feedback and how to, you know, advance in our classes. I think more people will start coming to you. And, you know, I think like um, someone like Sally, who did use that opportunity, um, will now start promoting that to our new swimmers that join next year. So I think on the other end of things, I think the faculty advisors can I can help bring more recognition from the faculty of the value of athletics. Sometimes we think of those as, as competing for our students' time and not seeing that the two form a you know, healthy, rounded experience for our students and, and similarly bringing faculty to uh, meets. So motivating my colleagues to come out and say, you know, some of the other sports like basketball again are more generally popular and some of the more endurance sports like people who go and swim a mile, we have to learn to appreciate that. Um, and then bringing other faculty around to see that um, I think will help the program and help build those connections between faculty and, and our students and their athletic lives. 
And it's nice you bring up the aerobic events because we know Pat's going to be doing the mile yes, for us next that's season. That's very exciting. So. Very exciting uh, to hear about. I, I, turn her back. Turn her back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, and I guess one way to look at this, right? So that's how we look at it, right? But it's you two that are getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. What is it you're looking to get out of it? I don't know. I think, I mean, fingers crossed, I haven't had to reach out to him for anything academic yet. But I also think it's just a good thing to have him around pool deck because like he said like whenever he's swimming i'm always guarding and he he makes work fun it's, it's always it's always a pleasure talking to him he's, he's a fun personality and you know lifeguarding is boring you just sit there and watch people go up and down the pool you know it's not fun and he makes it he makes it fun so i think it's good to have that and it kind of it bridges the gap between sports and athletics because you you have that connection there yeah and i think sometimes people think that their professors or in general they're not like not like they're not like them. They're ab they're above them because like they're your superior. They teach stuff like that, and it definitely helps to make it um, kind of ground them to earth. Of they're people too, and they understand it. So if they get more into our world of being a student athlete, especially if they weren't one themselves, it definitely helps with that. And I hope that people people will reach out to him even if they don't have academic issues. Sometimes it just helps to go to make sure you don't have issues later on if you know how to handle it from the start which I recommend people do because it's definitely very helpful. Also, I, I think I think there's like a lot of, of stigma when it comes to like reaching out to somebody about academic help because, you know, it makes nobody wants to feel like they're they're behind or struggling compared to their peers. And I think a lot of people are afraid of their professors in that way. Like, oh, he's he's gonna think I'm I'm not doing something right or I maybe I'm not a good student. And I think it helps kind of kind of remove that that fear there of that. Yeah, especially as I was just telling uh, Mark and Pat earlier that I go to office hours every week, mainly to Dr. Coffin over here, and I I think that it definitely just helps because it also makes them know that you're like trying and doing your best with it. So if that bridge can be um, reached right off the bat with even just an academic advisor, just so they could push you in that direction of go ask for help even if you don't really think you truly need it yet, because you will later on, and it will definitely help end that stigma. Because I agree, it's very real. Well, and from a coaching standpoint. I always encourage them to reach out to me, right? I've never had the opportunity to have a professor where they can reach out to. And um, a lot of times they'll reach out when it's too late. So, but now it gives them the option to maybe reach out to Dave earlier, where me, it's like, get me out of this trouble. Well, I can't, <laughs> you know, I can't, so, you know, it's too late, you know? So if we have, if we get the conversation going earlier, um, we can keep our grades up and I like, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I think it does. Um, the team's GPA did go up 0.2 this year, which I think is a big difference. We were about 3.2, uh, and we were 3.4 something this year with um, our team GPA. So I, t I take no credit for that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we gave you free T-shirts. So I mean, what I'm still hoping to get out of the program is some more uh, help with my stroke <laughs> and, and flip turn. So now that the season's over, I'm waiting for Sally to come down to the pool and give me some swimming tips. I, I've been at the pool the whole time. <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> he doesn't want to distance swimmer's tips. Maybe he'll get me down to the pool. I, I think that's, that's, your, that's your bruise. <laughs> I was recruited as a 100 backstroker, Mark. What are you talking about? <laughs> Things change, Pat. Things change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as we wrap up part one of the Widener Athletics Professor and Athletic Team Relationship and Mentorship Program, Dave, thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us. Mark, Sally, and Pat, congratulations on your 22-23 season and Thank your you. performances at the 2023 MAC Championships a couple weekends ago. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on episode number four, part one. Have a great rest of your week and weekend. Go Pride.